The following is a video presentation on the proper use of the RT3422 tapping tool. It is designed to make the operation of your RT3422 easy and efficient. The RT3422 is designed to perform pressurized taps using a saddle mounted or welded nipple on steel, plastic, ductile, iron and cast iron pipe. Warning: Only use this tool to tap into lines that carry water, air, steam or natural gas. Do not exceed recommended pressure rates. Before assembling or operating the RT3422, be sure to read the operator's manual. Safety instructions are located in the front of the manual. Read and understand all the safety and operating instructions before operating the RT3422. Read all warning labels on the tapping tool. For your convenience, it is divided into the following segments so you can quickly find what you need. Operating instructions. Tapping into the main. Maintenance. Operating instructions. Before operating this tool, determine exactly what needs to be tapped into. Ensure that it is indeed the pipe that requires tapping. Consider not only the best route for the new line, but also the effect that any chips from the tapping operation could have on downstream equipment. Consider the orientation of the tap. Tapping on top of the pipe may drop chips into the tap pipe, whereas tapping at the bottom of the pipe will tend to drop the chips back into the tools. Use of the bleed valve assembly will tend to wash away most of the chips if open during the entire drilling operation. Determine whether a service saddle or a weld-in-place thread olet or weld olet will be used to mount the valve to the main. Consider the advantages and disadvantages of each type. See page 4 of your operator's manual for further information. Select which corporation stop or valve is to be used. Only a full port ball, plug or gate valve will work. Check to be sure that the cutter will pass through the valve before mounting the valve and tool. If it does not fit, Another brand or type of valve will be required. For this demonstration, the operator is tapping through a ball valve mounted on a thread olet welded to steel pipe. To assemble the tool for use, select the correct valve adapter, pilot drill, extension and saw adapter from the valve adapter selection chart in the operator's manual. After the tool is in the shortest collapsed position and you have selected the proper size extension, hold the spindle by the flats at the end and screw the extension into the end of the spindle. This only has to be hand tight. Inspect the Vidon O-ring seal in the valve adapter, replacing if damaged. Assemble the valve adapter onto the feed screw and hold the bronze feed screw by the flats. You will feel the adapter reach an abrupt stop as the feed screw bottoms out in the valve adapter. Select the cutter to be used for this particular operation from the chart in the operator's manual. Inspect the selected cutter to be used. To ensure that it is in good working order, and screw it into the hole saw adapter if present, or directly into the extension as required. This only has to be hand tight. Inspect the selected pilot drill for this particular operation to ensure that it is in good working order. Pay particular attention to the coupon retaining device, as the coupon may not be retrieved if this device is damaged. Insert the correct pilot drill into either the hole saw adapter or directly into the cutter as required. 
secure the pilot drill in place with the set screw positioned on the flat of the pilot and firmly tightened. Unscrew the sleeve back up the feed screw until it stops. Tapping into the main. Apply sealant to the joint and tightly thread it into the threadolet to assure a leak-proof assembly. Make sure the valve is in the closed position. This ensures that the valve can be closed once the tap is completed. To determine the feasibility of the tapping operation, make a measurement from the surface of the pipe to the outlet end of the valve. This is the minimum amount of stroke required before the cutter makes contact with the pipe to be drilled. If the distance is greater than 11 inches, the machine may not have enough travel to safely complete the tap and this operation must be aborted and reconfigured. Attach the fully assembled and fully extended tapping tool to the outlet thread of the valve by screwing on the valve adapter. Pipe sealant is recommended for NPT valve adapters. The valve adapter should be firmly tightened so as not to leak. Open the valve. When the bleed-off valve is used, a hose may be connected to it to help direct the discharge. Warning! Be sure no one is standing in line of the discharge from the bleed valve in the event of accidental opening of the valve. Turn the sleeve clockwise until the pilot drill comes into light contact with the main. Then, back the sleeve up one turn. Using the ratchet wrench or a power tool, rotate the drive shaft at the 11 16 inch hex while continually applying pressure by turning the sleeve. For this demonstration, we are using a low RPM right angle drill. Warning! Electric drill should not be used for natural gas applications. Use proper grounding and a GFI at all times. Do not apply too much pressure on the cutter and pipe with the feed screw. Light, even pressure applied with the feed will produce superior cutting characteristics and help extend cutter life. Warning! Excessive feed may result in pilot drill and cutter damage or possible injury to the operator. Continue to drill through the main until no resistance is felt when advancing the feed. At this point, the pilot drill has penetrated the main. The valve and the tool are now filled with the media from the pipe. Advance the sleeve until the cutter comes into light contact with the main. Then, back up the sleeve one turn. Resume turning the shaft and advance the cutter as before until the tap is finished. Stop immediately. Continuing past this point could possibly penetrate the far side of the pipe. Open the bleed valve to wash away chips and to confirm tap is successful and close the valve. Remove the ratchet or power tool from the hex on the drive shaft. Turn the sleeve counterclockwise until all the threads of the feed screw are exposed and the sleeve comes to a halt. This action has fully retracted the cutter and the coupon. Close the valve. Should it be difficult to close the valve, open the bleed valve again, wash away as many remaining chips as possible. Ensure that the ball valve is closed before proceeding. Secure the valve to prevent it from disconnecting as the tool is unscrewed. Be prepared for the tool to suddenly come free, for it may spill out any media it contains. If the drill pipe was dry, be aware that the cutter may be hot. The new service may now be attached to the outlet end of the valve. To remove the coupon from the cutter, turn the sleeve clockwise until the cutter is exposed. Remove the pilot drill in order to make the coupon removal easier.
When you are finished, remove the accessories from the tool. Turn the sleeve clockwise until the threads of the feed screw are hidden and the tool is fully collapsed. At this point, remove the shaft extension. Wipe off and store all components. Maintenance Cleaning and maintaining the RT3422 should only be conducted by a qualified service technician. To disassemble the tool, turn the sleeve clockwise until all the threads of the feed screw are hidden and the tool is fully collapsed. Place the tool horizontally on a table so the parts do not fall out. Locate and remove the set screw from the side of the red cap. Locate and remove the retaining ring and washer from the end of the red cap. Unscrew and remove the red end cap. Note that any media that has escaped the seal will collect under the cap and may be spilled at this time. Do not remove the maintenance-free sealed bearing from the end cap unless bearing replacement is necessary. Loosen the two locking set screws and then unscrew and remove the seal cap. Remove the seal ring from inside the end of the feed screw by using two flat screwdrivers. Push the spindle from the hex end and remove it from the opposite end of the tool. Remove the two graphite seals. If the graphite seals are damaged or worn, Discard them and replace with two new seals. Turn the sleeve counterclockwise until all the threads of the feed screw are exposed and the sleeve separates. This completes the disassembly of the tool. If needed, wash parts in a degreaser tank and wipe clean. Seals cannot be washed and reused. To assemble the tool, inspect the feed screw and sleeve for any damage. Replace if necessary. Lubricate the Acme threads on the feed screw with grease. Turn the sleeve clockwise onto the feed screw until all the threads are hidden and the tool is fully collapsed. Place the tool horizontally on a table so that the parts do not fall out. Inspect the spindle for any damage and replace if necessary. Insert the spindle into the adapter end of the feed screw, hex end first. Slide it as far as it will go. Use the original graphite seals if they are undamaged, otherwise replace them. Insert the two graphite seals into the feed screw staggered 180 degrees so that the seals surround the spindle shaft. Inspect the seal ring for any damage and replace if necessary. Replace the seal ring with the angle face in contact with the seals. Inspect the seal cap for any damage and replace if necessary. Screw the seal cap partially onto the feed screw.
adjust the seal pressure by progressively tightening the seal cap with a wrench as the effort to turn the spindle with a second wrench is tested. If a torque wrench is used, it should be set to 60 inch-pounds. When resistance to turning the spindle is felt, loosen the seal cap just far enough to reduce most resistance. Lock the seal cap in place with the two locking set screws. Inspect the end cap bearing assembly for any damage and replace if necessary. Place the end cap bearing assembly on the protruding spindle shaft, followed by the washer and secure in place with the retaining ring sharp side up. Push the spindle end cap assembly onto the sleeve and screw into position. Secure it with the set screw. Wipe the tool down. 